You guys, today's video uh, is a little scary because I'm putting $9,000 worth of Mac on the line to find out the answer to one simple question. Is the Mac Studio upgradable? Make sure to get subscribed, leave a like down below. This should be interesting. Today's video is sponsored by Morning Brew, a free daily newsletter delivered Monday through Sunday. Do you start your mornings aimlessly browsing social media with no clear idea where you can find reliable, accurate information? Well, Morning Brew gets you up to date with the latest stories in business, finance, and tech in just five minutes. Morning Brew gives you news in a witty, relevant, and informative way compared to dry, traditional news where you often have to read paragraphs to get to the point. So go ahead and give it a try. It takes just 15 seconds to get signed up and stay up to date on the latest in tech, business, and finance. Check out the link in the description below to try Morning Brew completely free. And now, let's get back to the video. I've got a $4,000 and a $5,000 Mac Studio that I'm gonna be putting on the line today. So let me explain how this is gonna work and why I have two. Uh, you may have seen Max Tech's video where they basically tore down the entire Mac Studio. And before taking out the logic board, they noticed that there is actually a modular SSD port two specifically, and it seems like by default, one of them is populated and one of them is empty. So it begs the question, can you actually upgrade the storage? Well, it's hard to know because it's a proprietary port without having two Mac Studio SSDs. And I think you can now see where this is going. So what we're gonna do, because I've already done the benchmarks on this one, I am actually going to wipe the SSD, completely erase it from disk utility, uh, because I, I think that would probably give us the best chance of this working. Uh, the other thing that I did over here was boot into recovery mode, and I actually ran a terminal command called CSR util disable, which disables system integrity protection. So I think that should give us the best chance of maybe being able to get the machine to recognize the new storage. I really don't know what to expect. I'm going into this completely blind. Okay, here is the Mac Studio. Typical Apple, they've given us this lovely looking rubber ring, very clean, no visible screws, but that means we have to peel it open to get inside the thing. I finally got the pry tool in. Oh my gosh. Folks, this, this is not an easy job. Just getting around this adhesive is, it's a, it's a real challenge, but we're finally in. All right, so to take off this bottom case, these are T8 screws and they are, damn, they are really in there. Next round of screws. So there we have our 370 watt power supply. And I have to say, from a right to repair perspective, this sucks. Apple has left that basically completely exposed for, I assume, cooling reasons to make the components easier uh, for air to get across. But the end result is an extremely and unnecessarily hazardous opening procedure, which is really not good. So here on the top left of the underside of the board, is our SSD. Now, this is another T8 screw. We're gonna go ahead and remove that. And then 
it seems like Apple has taped over um, some sort of a heat spreader to, I guess, make this look cooler on the inside that they don't want you to see. Oh, folks, we have removed the SSD. Uh, if you look back at teardowns of the M1 Pro and Max MacBook Pro, this is, I think, the same chips that Apple uses there. But one thing that is standing out to me is that underneath the SSD slot here, we have these two Texas Instrument control modules, and then there's also this covered module. Whereas on the other SSD slot over here, the PCB is blank underneath. So if I had to guess right now, based on what we're seeing, I would guess that the one or maybe even the two terabyte models come with a single SSD module installed over here, whereas the four and eight terabyte models probably have a second module on this side. If you look at Apple's marketing images from the event, you can actually see two SSDs included in one of their models. But the question for us now is, can I take this SSD module and install it in the empty slot on the other Mac Studio to double its storage from one to two terabytes? Well, let's find out. I'm utterly terrified, but we're gonna plug it in and turn it on and see what happens. Oh my. Oh, look at this. We seem to have upset the gods of Apple. They have blessed us with a flashing amber light. In fact, the more eagle-eyed viewer might even notice that this is Morse code. It's going one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That is Morse code for SOS. Our Mac studio is crying out for help. Papa Tim, you gotta rescue him. Someone's trying to make him faster and better. So the Mac Studio does not like having storage added to it, but then I thought, okay, we should probably figure out whether the slot works at all. So I took the built-in original SSD, swapped it over to the second slot, and then tried booting it off of that. This time though, we didn't get the blinking amber SOS light, we just got a blinking normal white status light, which means that it didn't recognize the SSD at all. So what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that we can't boot from the secondary SSD slot, which is really sad. But more importantly, it recognized when we put another SSD in there that the firmware didn't like. That's why we got that flashing amber light instead of just the flashing white light. So clearly it could tell that another SSD was in there, but not an SSD that it would let us boot from or access or even turn the system on at all. So clearly things aren't going great so far, but I decided to try one last experiment. Since we saw that we were not able to boot from the second SSD slot, I decided to swap the SSDs. So this isn't really an upgrade so much as an exchange. I took the SSD from the $5,000 machine and put it in the $4,000 machine to see if the system would boot from a known good SSD in a slot that we know the machine is actually capable of booting from. It was at this point 
that my worst fear came true. The machine refused to turn on. I tried turning it on normally by pressing the power button. I tried booting into recovery mode by holding the power button. I unplugged and replugged the machine several times. It simply refused to boot. What Apple is doing here with the Mac Studio is simply inexcusable. We all thought late last year when Apple announced the iPhone and Mac repair program that would make parts and tools and repair guides available to the public that they were changing their ways. But this proves without a shadow of a doubt that the only reason they did any of that was to avoid regulatory scrutiny. Apple does not care about your right to repair. Make no mistake. What we've seen here today is that Apple is intentionally, deliberately restricting your access to your own device. In my opinion, this is actually worse than soldering the storage onto a logic board. This is worse than soldering the RAM onto the SOC. In the case of unified memory, you at least get some benefits for the compromise of lacking upgradability. I would personally rather have 16 gigabytes of unified memory than 32 gigabytes of removable standard memory. Unified memory just has a lot of inherent benefits, but there is no benefit to shipping a machine with removable storage mediums that can't be upgraded. And then they have the audacity to flash an amber SOS signal. Really? They're gonna play the victim after restricting your ability to modify a machine that you paid $5,000 for that was designed with removable storage. I mean, it is bad enough that there is a second SSD slot that is non-functional. That means Apple is shipping multi-thousand dollar machines where they were too cheap to even install the controllers that were necessary to make that slot work, which is outrageous. But not only that, they won't even allow you to swap the factory SSD out for a different one. Not even a third party one, another OEM Apple factory SSD. That has no justification. I'm sure they'll talk about security and privacy. Okay, if I want security, I'm just gonna lock this thing up with the Kensington lock, all right? I don't need you to be making decisions for me about the capability and the capacity of this machine for its entire lifespan. The risk of somebody taking the storage out and stealing my data pales in comparison to the lack of ability to increase the storage on a $5,000 machine that could easily last me 10 years. And I get it, you know, it's not really that different from what Apple has been doing with MacBooks for six years now. But there is something just repulsive about shipping a machine with removable storage and then not letting you remove it for completely arbitrary reasons. It's not like doing this was necessary to save space. I mean, sure, yeah, maybe you have to use a proprietary SSD module if you wanna get this design, fine, whatever. But there's no reason why that should be firmware locked to the machine that it ships in. That is a purely unnecessary decision that was made out of greed. But who knows? Maybe we can persuade Apple to change their mind. Because after all, it is a software or firmware lock that's preventing this machine from being user upgradable. As much as it pains me to have a secondary SSD slot that doesn't function on a $5,000 machine, we could at least try to get Apple to change their mind about letting us upgrade the primary SSD. The community of people who want to upgrade and customize their Macs, I'm sure is a small one, but this information is now out there. And if enough of us are angry, maybe, just maybe, we could get Apple to reverse course. If they did that, obviously I'd be happy, but they definitely won't get any points from me. So for today, unfortunately, we took the L on this one. And with that, I thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.